Hey guys, this is MathCamp321 presenting a short video on parallelograms. I'm going to start by giving you the definition of a parallelogram and I'd like you to write that definition into your notes. If you need to pause the video so you can catch up and write that definition down, that's fine. Just make sure you resume the video when you're done. A parallelogram is a four-sided polygon in which both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Now, with respect to the appearance of a parallelogram, what does a parallelogram look like? A parallelogram looks like a rectangle that has been tilted to one side or the other. It doesn't matter how severe the tilt is, as long as both pairs of opposite sides of the polygon are parallel, then it's a parallelogram. And what I've provided for you here are two illustrations of parallelograms. They both tilt to the right, but the first one tilts just a little bit to the right, and the other one tilts more severely to the right. But we can tell from these extra arrows that have been indicated with tick marks that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So these two figures are both, in fact, parallelograms. Okay, on this slide, we're going to talk a little bit about how to name a parallelogram. When naming a parallelogram, use a mini parallelogram symbol followed by identifying the four vertices in either clockwise or counterclockwise order. Number one, the polygon shown below is a parallelogram. Name it in four different ways. Then identify the sides that are parallel using proper notation. Okay, so we know that this is a four-sided figure in which both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So of course it's a parallelogram. But now I want to identify it. I want to name it. So I'm going to start with the little parallelogram symbol. Now I can start at any letter I want, but I think most people would start with A because it's the first letter of the alphabet. And then you can either decide to go in clockwise order or counterclockwise order. And again, I think most people would probably go in clockwise order, although it doesn't matter as long as you either go clockwise or counterclockwise. What you don't want to do is skip around. You would never want to call this parallelogram A, C, D, B. That would not be acceptable. So I'm going to start by saying parallelogram A, B, C, D. But I could also call it something else. This time I'm going to start at D, and this time I will go counterclockwise. I'm going to call this parallelogram D, C, B, A. And let's go for a third option. This time I'm going to call it parallelogram DABC. And finally, I'll call it a parallelogram CDAB. So there are a few other ways to name this parallelogram, but I just want to give you four different options and really demonstrate the point that the letters have to go in order. Whether that order is clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. Now the last part of the question is to identify the parallel sides using proper notation. So right now let's look at the top and the bottom segments. Those would be AB and DC. So I'm going to say that AB is parallel to DC. And I'm also going to say on the left and the right sides that segments AD and BC are also parallel. Okay, hold tight for the next slide. Okay guys, on this slide we're going to talk about the fact that any parallelogram in the world share five characteristics or properties. These five properties occur in every single parallelogram. One of the properties you already know. So on this slide our objective is to go over those five properties and let's start with the one that we already know which is that if a figure is a parallelogram then both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Now let's go ahead and mark that in the diagram. Okay, let's move to the second property. The second property is that if a figure is a parallelogram, then both pairs of opposite sides are going to be congruent. Let's mark those with tick marks as well. The opposite sides would be PO and MN and PM and ON. 
Now there's going to be a lot of tick marks here, so having multiple colors could be helpful. The next property that would exist amongst all parallelograms is that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So what are the opposite angles in this parallelogram? If I started out by focusing on angle O, which angle do you think would be opposite? Well, if you said angle M, then you're correct. These are opposite angles of the parallelogram, and they're congruent. They even look like they're the same. There's another pair, though, and that pair would be angle P and angle N. So let's go ahead and mark those as well. Let's go to our fourth property. This property states that all consecutive angles of a parallelogram are supplementary. Let's discuss for a moment what the word consecutive means. Consecutive means one after the other. So if I said to name two angles in this diagram that are consecutive, one after the other, you might say angles P and M. You might say angles M and N. Because if you were to read the labeling of this parallelogram, you might go in that order, labeling those two things next to each other. So what this is saying is that any two angles that are next to each other are going to add up to 180, or that they're supplementary. And this is based upon the fact that the lines themselves that make up the parallelogram are parallel. So if I just highlight one of those situations, those two lines are parallel because we knew that this figure was a parallelogram. And if we think of this line right here that I just drew, very, very poorly, I might add, if that's our, ooh, let me try, I'm going to try that whole thing again because that was really, it wasn't acceptable, really. I'm sure a lot of you are laughing right now, mocking me. This is a much better, I'm glad that, ooh, I'm glad that I did that, I think. Okay, so anyway, we've got this situation, and if I were to put, let's say, a 1 here and a 2 here, these would be same side interior angles. And we know that if two lines are parallel, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. So I th that might make a little more sense why any two angles next to each other are going to be supplementary. Now let's consider the last property. The last property states that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Now this particular parallelogram doesn't even have the diagonals drawn in. So I think we should start by drawing the diagonals in. If I were to draw a diagonal from point O, what corner do you think it would go to? If you said point M, then you're correct. So let's go ahead and draw that diagonal OM in. Okay, now there's another diagonal, and this diagonal is going to originate from point P. Where do you think it's going to end? If you said point N, then you're correct. Segment PN is another diagonal. Now, when these two diagonals intersect, we can call that point J. And what this final property is saying is that when you draw the diagonals in for a, power, for a parallelogram, that they're going to cut each other in half. They're going to bisect each other. So this piece over here is the same as this piece over here. And this piece over here will be the same as this piece over here. And you could show that by proving that these different triangles on the inside are congruent. And we'll save that for a class activity. So right now, in summary for this slide, we went over five properties for any parallelogram on the planet. Two of them had to do with sides. Two of them had to do with angles. And one of them had to do with the diagonals. So some students in the past have remembered the five properties by using the acronym SAD with this alternate spelling, S-S-A-A-D. Two of the properties have to do with sides, two of the properties have to do with angles, and one of them has to do with diagonals. Maybe when this video is over, you could get a piece of scrap paper and try to generate a list of the five properties 
without looking back at your notes. That might be a really fun challenge.